Okay, in this video I want to show you three different ways of how you can fade the effect of a Lightroom preset. I don't know about you, but I love working with Lightroom presets. In fact, I love it so much I've created a bunch of them uh, myself and I often use them when I need inspiration to you know to post process a particular shoot now this is a picture that i shot recently with the gfx 50s uh, fujifilm medium format camera and um, i was looking for a kind of grungy post processing effect now i have a preset collection here called colorific which applies filmic color grades to um, to images and for example the nice thing about presets in general in Lightroom is of course that if you hover over the presets you see the effects of the preset already previewed in the navigator window. Now sometimes the effect of a preset may be a little bit too much for what you're trying to achieve. For example in this case I really like the effect of this preset here Noah but I think it's a bit too much for this image. Now, there's three things, as I mentioned, that you can do if you have a case like this. The first is the all manual way, and it involves really having a good knowledge of Lightroom, basically, because what you need to do in this case is just dial back all the settings more to their standard uh, value. So for example, if we reset this image once again, you see all the sliders here are at their defaults of zero. Now, if I apply this preset, this is a rather complex preset, which, which changes lots of features. So I could mitigate the effect by dialing the different sliders back to their default values. But like I said, that is a, a tedious process and it also involves a lot of uh, Lightroom no knowledge as to what the uh, default values of all of the uh, settings are. For example, this preset here also uses, if I'm not mistaken, it, it uses a custom tone curve. And if you don't know about that tone curve, well, then you wouldn't be able to dial down uh, its effect, obviously. So like I, I can see, there's lots of different values here, lots of changes. So this is one way to do it, but it's a very labor intensive way. Now, however, I do recommend that if you do it this way and you like the effect of your dialed down, dialed back preset, just turn it into a new preset, obviously, so you don't have to do the work each and every time again. So that was the first idea. The second idea is the following, and that uses a very cool Lightroom plugin. One of the things I love about Lightroom is that you have all kinds of plugins that are created for it. And one is especially handy and it's called the fader. And if you install it, you can run it through Lightroom plugin extras, the fader. And what it will do is it will make a list of all your developed presets. And if you have a bunch of them like me, it can take a while. But other than that, the plugin is really fast. And it kind of allows you to scale the effect of a preset on the fly. So when you run the plugin, you are presented with a dialog box. And in that dialog box, you have a cool fade slider. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is choose the specific preset folder and then the actual preset in that folder. And then you can just dial back the um, opacity of the preset and it will basically it will scale all the values back to their default setting in a proportional way that is all the values that can be scaled because for example some settings like black and white you cannot scale that between black and white and color so it's one or or the other so uh, but nevertheless i think it's a very handy uh, plugin to uh, to have and to use and it even has a setting that goes beyond 100 to 150 for those rare instances where you might find the base effect of a preset too little and you want actually to overcook the preset a little. But this is definitely not the case with this particular preset. Okay, so that's the second way of uh, fading a Lightroom preset. The third way in not, doesn't involve a plugin, but it involves Photoshop. So. How do we do that? Well, 
The way I recommend you do it is to create a virtual copy. You choose photo, create virtual copy, and then you apply the preset to that virtual copy. Okay. Now, one thing you also have to do is to copy some of the settings over to your original because some presets, they might change the uh, lens corrections or they might have a transform change included in them or any other change that actually affects the geometry of the image or a crop or whatever. Well, crop cannot really be put into presets, but anyway, they can change. If, if a preset changes the geometry of your, um, of your picture, well, then you should also apply that geometry change to the original. And why that is, is going to become clear in the next step. So in this case, what I'll do is I'll copy the lens corrections and any transform. And um, yeah, those are the ones that I need. I will copy those and I will paste them onto the original image. Now, in this case, it doesn't change anything, but it's just to make sure. What I'll do then is I will choose both images and I will select photo, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. And this, as you might guess, will open both files as one layered file into Photoshop. It's actually a command I use quite a lot, not only for this particular purpose, but also for purposes like um, layer masking two files into one another and, and other uh, things like that. So your original and your preset version are now layered on top of each other. And the only thing you have to do is go to the uh, layers panel and just change the opacity from 100% all the way down to whatever effect you like. So for example, in this case, I kind of like 60%. It's a little more subtle and I like it a little bit better. Now, the added advantage of doing the Photoshop layers workflow is that you can even work with layer masks. So for example, suppose I want the effect to be even less pronounced on our model's face here. What I can actually do is add a layer mask and then paint with black paint on the face of our model. And I can take the effect away from her arms, for example. Now, in this case, it looks a bit unnatural because the preset also added a warm tint to the image, but it's just to give you an idea that this layered workflow actually allows you to selectively add more or less of a preset in specific areas. So for example, if a preset over does only the sky, well, then you could add a layer mask to the sky and, for example, paint with 50% gray to apply the effect of the preset only with 50% gray onto your sky and 100% maybe everywhere else. So there you have it, three different ways of fading the effect of a Lightroom preset. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the tip. And if you want to find out more about my Lightroom presets, have a look at lightroompresets.be. See you.